Thank you, Will and Janet. Um, <clears throat> those of you that were here last week, I, well, I wasn't here last week, and, but I did see the pictures. And the pictures were incredible. And I'm thinking, you might not want me back this week, because <laughs> it looks really, really good. We had this big, those of you that weren't here, we had this big boat in the middle here, seats round, I don't, I don't know what, big sails. Uh, it looked amazing. Um, don't know. I think it was a baptistry that was also a communion table. It looks fantastic. So uh, I think Emma's after my job. Um, um, it looks really good. Um, so well done to all of those involved in that. Let me pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this time and we thank you for your word. And Lord, as we look into your word this morning, we just invite your spirit amongst us. Lord, I pray uh, that you will speak to us through your spirit, speak to us through the word, through the words that I've prepared. May you anoint this time, Lord, and we just open our hearts, open our minds to you and ask that you just... Uh, do whatever you need to do in our hearts and in our minds. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, as I said, I wasn't here last week. I was enjoying the uh, uh, Norfolk Storms camping for a week last week. Uh, so I survived, or we survived. Um, and at the back end of that week, so I came back midweek uh, this week, and at the back end... Um, so early on this week I was thinking uh, about what I should be speaking on uh, this morning and um, actually it was, it was before last Sunday um, and the, the topic that was going on in my mind was the topic of generosity, of giving and tithing and I, I don't mind um, saying that whenever I get this kind of prompting I don't like it. I don't mind saying it. I, I, I don't get all excited and think, yes, I'm going to be speaking to the church about money this Sunday. That's not how it works. The thought of publicly speaking to others about money uh, doesn't excite me, really. I've got to be honest. It's, I mean, maybe, maybe it should. Uh, it's not easy. I wouldn't say it doesn't excite me, but it's not easy. It's not easy. However, I realise the importance of it, uh, and I try and speak on this topic once a year. I don't advertise it because none of you would come. Uh, so, so we were camping uh, near Sheringham, uh, Kellen Heath, those of you who know it, uh, near Sheringham, and we've been there about four or five times, and we've often driven past while we're there a church called... Uh, I think it's the Lighthouse Community Church. And it looks really nice. It looks over, kind of, you've got a view of the sea. It looks really uh, exciting church. Uh, but every time we've been there and gone past it, it's never been on a Sunday, so I've not, we've never been able to go uh, to worship there. Um, so this week, I, it, it, it Clash with a free Sunday. Uh, last week it clashed with a free Sunday. So, so we went, and it was funny because I'd just the day before been thinking about this topic of generosity and giving. And guess what? The preacher, the pastor there, spoke on on giving and tithing, and he was actually very apologetic because there were some holiday guests there, including us. And again, this morning, I'm thinking, oh, no, we've got, we've got guests again this morning, uh, uh, which is great. Um, it's fantastic to have guests. We have guests every, every week. Um, but I also, I, I, that just makes it a little bit more uneasy for me, speaking on, on, on this topic. Um, but he admitted that he didn't like speaking on this topic. So I, I felt uh, that, that made me feel good. And it kind of confirmed that, that this is what God wanted, was prompting me to speak on uh, this morning. Um, so when I got home, I looked up some familiar texts um, that I could potentially uh, speak on. And I didn't use the one that the pastor spoke on uh, in Sheringham. Um, 
but I went for, there's loads of different texts I could have chosen, and I went for the one that uh, Janet's just read to us in 2 Corinthians. But it also struck me that two of the most common texts, Bible texts on giving, are either side of probably the most uh, common text on prayer. Jesus' is teaching on prayer. Jesus' is teaching uh, in, in Matthew um, on, on the Lord's Prayer, either side of it, right, uh, right at the start and right at the end, Jesus is talking uh, about uh, money. And having spent most of the year, uh, those of you that are regular here, looking at the topic of prayer, I find it quite fascinating and interesting that either side of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew, Jesus is talking uh, about money. However challenging the subject, uh, we do need to talk about it. 11 of Jesus' 46 parables are on the subject of money. Uh, so this morning I'm talking about generosity, I'm talking about giving and tithing. And I've often combined a message on generosity and giving with things like time, with things like possessions, and uh, it not just being about money. And that's true. Um, um, but this morning we're specifically looking at our financial giving this morning. Uh, one thing that the pastor in Sheringham did was he, 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 he came up with quite a few stats at the beginning of his message on on giving and, and and i looked up some of these stats and i wasn't sure about all the sources but one thing that stuck out to me uh, and seemed to be consistent was of all the evangelical and charismatic churches in the uk and america uh on, on average about about five percent of churchgoers in those churches tithe um, and I'm I'm pleased to know I'm pleased that I have no idea of of how much people give in the church it's I'm quite intentional about that I don't want to know I only know how much I give how much we give as a family I don't know how much anyone else gives and if that stat of five percent is anywhere near um, the national average for us here at Linton Free Church. I'll be honest, we can only imagine how much more we could do as a church if more people tithe. Now, don't get me wrong, we are a very generous church. Uh, we can see that from our, our building project um, and how we raise great amount of money for that. Now we're told in, in the Old Testament, in Malachi 3, chapter 10, it says this, it says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room, there will, there will not be enough room to store it. Now the tithe is 10% is of the individual income uh, that we uh, give to the local church. And I personally uh, believe that this is a, a biblical model that we should ideally follow. Set aside 10% of our income before tax to give to the local church. I also believe that we are biblically encouraged to give on top of that, on top of our tithes. But in saying all of this, I also know the realities of life. I also know the reality of, uh, of life. And for some of us, tithing our income may not be something we can do, uh, specifically in, in different seasons. Uh, it could be that we have a husband or a wife that's not um, a follower of Christ and not part of the church. It could be that we have um, financial hardship, debt, or, or things that need sorting out. Uh, first, uh, there are many good and valid reasons uh, why some people don't feel as though they can tithe. So I believe in the principle of tithing, 
but I certainly wouldn't hammer anyone uh, for not tithing um, or say it's a condition uh, to be part of the church. That is absolutely not true. So that's a, just a little bit of a, 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 a background of my, my understanding. I want to share with us five um, uh, points of why I think we should be generous with our finances from the scripture that we've had read this morning. I will also uh, uh, dip into uh, some other texts. So the first one, really important, um, and I think this is really why we should give, why we should tithe. We should give because God gave to us. It's really important. We've just celebrated the most important week of the Christian calendar. And we celebrated what Jesus did for us. And John 3.16 um, the most famous verse in the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God has given, through Jesus, God has given his very, very, very best to us. And he deserves the best from his people. Deuteronomy uh, 10 verse 14 declares, To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Everything in it. All that we have, all our possessions, each one of us, all our possessions belong to God. So we should live with the attitude um, that, of that that all that we have belongs to God. Now, I've often heard Christians say uh, that this is a reason why they don't give regularly. Because they argue, well, I give 100%. Because everything belongs to God. Now, the problem with that is that they're deciding what to spend all their money on. And uh, that's just one of the problems. The fact that everything belongs to God, everything that we have belongs to God, shouldn't be a reason for us not to give to our local church. Our heart should be to want to give something back to God, simply because of what he gave. Even right at the start of Genesis, we see how the victory uh, God's people had led them to tithe. In Genesis 14, verse 20, it says, And praise be to God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Avra Abraham acknowledged that his victory was made possible by God and therefore the spoils of his victory belonged to, to God and that was 10% you hear this all the time from me we have the victory through Christ Jesus that should cause us to give it should cause us to be generous we will never be, be able to outgive God but God's generosity towards us should stir us to be generous towards him now the second thing the second point is it's a heart thing it's a heart thing verse 7 of our reading says each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver one of the reasons why I find it difficult to talk about finances from the pulpit is I struggle with the thought of telling people uh, what to do with their money. That's not easy. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm uh, not a financial expert at all, as uh, Will might be able to clarify. <laughs> However, I am trying to share what I believe is a biblical principle of how Christians should give. It's part of my responsibility to do that, whether I like it or not. But what people give 
and don't give doesn't affect how I see them as members of this church family. I may not think that it's... Um, I mean, you could have been coming here for 20 years and never given anything in, in the, the offertory. And that, that doesn't really bother me. Um, you're still very much part of this church family. I might not think that's the most ideal way to live as a follower of Christ, but the, it's the truth. The truth is you, you don't have to give uh, to be part of this um, uh, fellowship. The reason why I'm giving the message that I'm giving this morning is because I absolutely believe it's the right thing for the church. And it should help every individual, every member of everyone here, every member of this church to live in the fullness of what God has uh, for them. Uh, 1 John 4, 9 uh, tells us this is how God showed his love among us. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his son, one and only son, into the world that we might live through him. If God, if God showed his love through giving, surely we are to de demonstrate our love towards him through our giving. Each individual should decide in their heart. It's up to you and God um, um, uh, to uh, decide what you should be giving. Uh, this is a, a real individual thing between you and God. It's something that each one of us should be talking to God about uh, in our homes. Uh, the third point, so it's a heart thing between you and God. The third point is our giving should be regular. Uh, this is important uh, because it keeps the church sustainable. It keeps the local church sustainable. The, the truth of it is, a lot of churches are dying because they don't have the finances. Some, some are dying with a lot of finances. They don't know what to do with it. But some are dying because of finances. Um, but Paul instructs the church in Corinth uh, in, earlier in, in 1 Corinthians 16.2, he says this, on the first day of every week, each one of you set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. This is Bible teaching that I'm sharing here this morning. It's not, it's not my stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's God's stuff here. And I love the thought of the church in Corinth being at the point where collections no longer needed to be made if i'm totally honest i'm not convinced we're there yet we've had conversations amongst elders about uh, after the whole covid thing about bringing the bags back and what we should be doing about uh, our offertories and we've had different ideas and things but one of the things that i like about the bags um uh, is is that it encourage it, it encourages it gives us a chance to encourage our kids to give. Um, not all kids have bank cards. Some do, I've noticed that, but not all kids have bank cards. And uh, it, it does encourage uh, um, us as parents, those of us that are parents, to encourage our kids to give. We should be installing um, biblical principles into our kids lives this is a bit of a aside to my point but if you're a parent out there with kids it's our responsibility to encourage our kids to give it will it will set them up for the future paul encouraged the corinthians to give regularly it wasn't special offerings it wasn't one-off gifts it was it was regular giving not under any kind of legalistic pressure but fr uh, freely and cheerfully. And the discipline involved was to set aside money weekly. Um, we don't necessarily need to set aside money weekly, uh, but the point is that we are encouraged biblically to set aside money regularly. And my understanding of scripture is that although everything that I have belongs to God, 
God has to be given the first tenth of all I receive and ad additional offerings that I choose to give. And I, I know this can be huge, hugely challenging, especially uh, in current uh, times. Um, but let's face it, scripture is challenging. Scripture, not just about giving, about loving our enemies, about forgiving, about so many things. If, if we don't forgive, God doesn't forgive us. There's so many things that's challenging about scripture. We need to be real um, about the, challenging, uh, the challenge of scripture. Malachi 3.8 says, Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did I ever cheat you? You have cheated me of, of the tithes and offerings due to me. Wow. Wow. Some, some scriptures hit, hit us hard. Um, it's a horrible thought that we might have cheated God in some way. Um, we don't want to be in that situation, do we? I, again, I do want to remind us that this is something that we decide personally between ourselves and God. And some will inevitably give far more than others. Some will decide that they can give more than 10%. Some will decide that they can't give 10%. That's okay. I know of a dear Christian lady who her husband spoke at my ordination and she had, uh, she, they weren't wealthy, particularly wealthy, but she tithed 90% and lived off 10%. Amazing. She, it was amazing. And I don't know how it happened for her because, I mean, she didn't have this amazing job. Um, but it's not about the amount. It's about that we do work out with God and we give regularly. You know, I've often heard Christians say, you know, I can't afford to give. And, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes that's, that's, that's true and that's right. Um, um, and that might be the case for some of you. But interestingly, I've also heard some Christians who practice tithing and they say, I can't afford not to give. I've heard that. Why? Because they know from experience that tithing works. You know, I heard this example some time ago. Um, so I'm not entirely convinced. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that this is still accurate, um, but it certainly was at one point. The, the shop, Body Shop, um, is not known to be a Christian organisation. I don't think it is a Christian organisation. But they're known for being very generous to their staff, and they also practice tithing. They give 10% of their profit away uh, to v various charities and apparent they've just go grown from strength to strength and they're not uh, they're doing really well I mean I don't know how if that's still the case uh, but that certainly uh, was true the Lord tells us in Malachi we've read 310 that and this is the only thing uh, 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 where this is the case we we can test God in our giving um, and see how much he will pour back into our lives. God multiplies whatever is given to him. Uh, God always outdoes us in giving, which leads me nicely to my fourth point. We've only got two more to go. Um, our giving produces fruit. Our reading says, whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Now, I absolutely believe my theology, my um, understanding is in the principle of you reap what you sow, etc. I believe that the best thing that you can do if you're sick is to lay hands on the sick. I believe um, if you're in need, it's great to be generous. That's why we're told to praise in all circumstances, because praise brings joy, even when we're in a mess, even when we're down. I have many experiences of 
giving when I felt as though I couldn't afford to give and it's resulted in money coming back. But that is not why I give. That is not why I give. We are to give to God and others out of love, not simply out of duty or obligation, or even for what we believe God will give us back. Who knows that God doesn't promise, promise us a Lamborghini if we give away a Skoda. <laughs> no offence to any Skoda drivers out there, because <laughs> Skoda's a very nice car. Um, but if we give away a beach hut, we don't get a mansion. That's not necessarily how it works. But God does promise to make all grace abound, to make all grace abound to us and meet our needs, that we may abound in every good work. And when, from our reading that Janet read, when Paul encouraged the Corinthians to give in that passage, um, it was not for support of the local church. It was not for them. It was for the poor saints in Jerusalem that were going through a famine. That's what their collection was for. Now, of course, we should give to our local church, but us individually, you individually, us as a church, Linton Free Church, um, we should discern what is the best way to give our money. We should be discerning as a church and really seeking God uh, where we need to be generous. You know, there's an amazing uh, verse that I came across uh, in Proverbs 19, verse 17. It says, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord. What a wonderful thought that is. That if you're generous to the poor, if you give to the poor, you're lending to God. What an incredible thought that is. It goes on to say, and he will repay him for his deed. Jesus said, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So Jesus actually commands us to give. In a sense, this is a spiritual discipline. And it does bring great rewards. But we shouldn't give for that reason, for what it does. The fruit of giving is an additional blessing as a result of our giving. My favourite point is my final point. This is truly awesome from our reading, I think. Our giving causes people to look to God. Our giving causes people to look to God. Not only does our reading say that generosity will result in thanksgiving to God, but verses 12 and 13 say this. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. You know, this is incredible. I was thinking about this, and be honest, how many here struggle sharing their faith? How many, how many, how many people struggle talking to people about Jesus sometimes? A few of you, uh, of you are admitting it. Uh, I think there's probably a few more. Do you know what you should do if you struggle sharing your faith? You should give more money. <laughs> you should give more money because it's, a, it, it's like sharing our faith because it causes people to look to God. I was thinking about this. I haven't spoken to Will or the elders, but I'm thinking of setting up this system in church where if you don't share your faith, one week, you know what's coming. <laughs> you double what you give financially. I'm not utterly convinced that that will go through church meeting. But we'll see, we've got one coming up. Our generosity, this is incredible, and this is what the Bible is saying. Our generosity, our giving, causes people to praise God. How cool is that? How co what... 
The obedience of the believer in their giving is proof that their faith is real. It's faith in action. If this is not a reason to give, I don't know what is. So our giving causes people to look to God. We should give because God gave to us. It's a heart thing. It really is between us and God of what we give. Our giving should be regular. Our giving produces fruit. And our giving, giving causes people to look to God. I want to challenge us this morning to think about our giving. Look at our finances. See what we can regularly give to the church. Pray about it. Um, pray uh, with your husband, your wife, or who, whoever, your children. Um, read scriptures on it. Talk to Christian friends. And make a decision on what you should give. And you know, it could be that you need to give less. Do you know what? I, this, I'm not here plugging to try and uh, get more. I'm trying to help us to be doing individually and as a church what the Bible teaches us to do. It could be that we have to give less. It could be that we need to give more. If you don't already and you feel as though you can, I want to encourage you to, to tithe, to give 10% of your income. And what I would do is I would encourage you, if you can, um, to do that for six months and just to see what happens. Um, see how God uses that. If you're a visitor, and I noticed there are a few visitors this morning, I'm not asking you to do that here. But if you insist, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> No, I'm not asking you to do that here. Um, you should be doing that at your local uh, church or, or, or that's where this is for. Um, this really is a message to, it's a message to all of us. Um, but I'm speaking uh, directly to regulars here. Uh, Ian's going to come up in a moment just to share some things on how we can give. I just want to pray, and then I'll probably pray again after Ian comes up. So let's just bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, I want to thank you for how much you give us, and ultimately for the, the gift of Jesus. And we can never outgive you. And Lord, I just pray over what I shared this morning. I pray for your hand to be upon it. Lord, I pray... You know my heart, God, and Lord, my heart is for each individually, each individual here to live in the fullness of what you have for them. And there's no condemnation, there's no judgment. Um, we, I pray that you will help us to speak to you and just hear from you about what we should be doing. Uh, individually, what we should be doing as a church. So Lord, I just pray that um, uh, you, you will just speak to us, each one of us, open our hearts and help us know uh, what is right uh, for us and for our own situations. In your name I pray. Amen.